gods of the theater smile on us you who sit up there stern in judgment smile on us you who look down on actors and who doesn't bless this yearly festival and smile on us we offer you song and Hello there, theater people, and welcome to Thespis in the Green Room, Season 2, Episode 14. It's Bruce and Melanie here. Hi, Bruce. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I am well. Thank you for asking. Good to hear your voice as usual. Wish we could see your face, but you know. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I was thinking about how long it's been since we've... I don't think I've actually seen you... I know. Since what, like March? I think it's been since March. I guess at least, because of course that was when the lockdown was. So, yeah, it's, yeah, it's bizarre. It's been That's forever. Crazy. It's gonna be. It's yeah. gonna be a year before you know it. I mean, we're we're nearly there now. It's almost yeah. been a year since we've seen mm-hmm. each other because it's November now. It's closing in on the end of November, and yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oh, crazy. Yeah, it really is. It really, really Thank is. Thank goodness but... for technology that allows mm-hmm. us to. I know. <laughs> it sustains us in all sorts of ways, doesn't it? Well, technology has saved us in a couple of ways, not just this podcast, but uh, lots of stuff going on. Although with COVID, we have our local headline, mm-hmm. which you probably heard about. I did. Oh, goodness. The Peace Center just... Pushing back a little further with regards to the Broadway run and well, as well as other programming, just, you know, everything's kind of taking a hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that. That came out on Thursday. They made that announcement that the Broadway series, uh, which was supposed to be back in the spring, but now it's been pushed to fall 2021. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, And of course, that's probably still tentative in a way, too, because you never know how things are going to progress, you know. (laughs) It depends on how COVID works itself out. (laughs) Who knows? Uh, but I mean, uh, what are you gonna do? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. in in positive COVID news, I guess, I guess, <laughs> yeah, it's positive. gotta pull these positives out. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. So a national headline here also announced on Thursday, November nineteenth, twenty twenty, Actors Equity and SAG AFTRA have finally reached an agreement over streaming theater. So mm-hmm. that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some people might have noticed that a lot of what we've seen streaming, a lot of it's coming out of the UK. A lot of the mm-hmm. stuff that's available online. Right. And that's because they got different rules. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> and of course, Actors Equity is the Stage Actors Union and SAG AFTRA handles everything on screen or on digital, essentially. Anything that's mm-hmm. on the computer, on movie screens, on television screens. So that was a big question mark on who who's in charge of the streaming of theater where where does that jurisdiction fall and and there was some craziness going on about that some controversy between the two unions but they finally worked it out and they have an agreement that is going to be valid through the end of 2021 Mm -hmm. so we may get to see some more u.s rooted theater being Mm -hmm. shown via the internet Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. I know it's just one other hurdle, you know, that the entertainment industry had to kind of jump in order to uh, to get content out there. I know. There's been a lot of pivoting lately. Mm. <laughs> well, that online discussion is a good segue in today's topic. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, Because today we want to discuss another filmed theater piece that we were able to see via the magic of the internet, which we are mm-hmm. we are thankful for. <laughs> and we both had a chance to watch this, and we thought it would be interesting to break this one down a little bit, as we did in our last episode when we discussed what the Constitution means to me. But this time we have a little different reaction to our experience, I think. But uh, so that would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, you know, it's, it was um, it was still a great experience watching a professionally filmed piece, and and it was very true to the whole vision of theater, which was kind of nice. You know, some of these other when they kind of get those pieces together for television, they just for me they're just not you know they're not real theater pieces only because I mean they're theater pieces, but they're they're filmed more like on a soundstage and. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't give you the same, you know, the same feeling of the stage. I love to see the magic 
on the stage happen. You know, everything changed and scenery's change and walking from one to the next and the lighting and, you know, everything mm -hmm. is just so magical on stage because you're working in this finite space that they just can create right. these beautiful pictures right in front of you. And you know, it just loses something to, for me anyway, when it's done kind of on a sound stage type of, you know, situation. But anyway. Right. And and that's what this this was not a sound stage. This was a West End production. Right. So mm -hmm. yep. so it was on par with well, yes and no. It was <laughs> a completely different kind of show than what the Constitution means yes. to me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Almost a one woman show, very yeah. small and not a musical. And this was a big flashy musical with all the bells and whistles. Right. And it was called From Here to Eternity, the musical. Mm -hmm. So this recently streamed on YouTube on the British based The Shows Must Go On channel. Right. And they've been very active during the COVID crisis, the pandemic. In the spring, they, they launched and they we saw a lot of Andrew Lloyd Webber. Yeah, they did a whole thing of Andrew Lloyd Webber's shows. Right. Yeah. And, they, and they've done some other things as well, not just yeah. Andrew Lloyd Webber. And, and this was not Andrew Lloyd Webber. No. <laughs> but most of the time, and from here to eternity was the case, it was only a 48-hour window. I know, it's so hard. You really have to set your schedule. I think the best thing to do is subscribe to the shows must go on YouTube channel, maybe their Facebook page, and then you can kind of keep up with what's coming. That's true. They'll get, you, they'll get you some notifications and so on, yes. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And YouTube has that nifty little trick where you can set the reminder on a video that's coming. Mm -hmm. you know, so it'll tell you. When I it's, need to do when some more on. of that, you know, use technology yeah. to my advantage, you know. Yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> so we tuned in from mm -hmm. here to eternity on when it was on YouTube via the shows must go on. But if you didn't catch it when it was on YouTube, there's a couple other options for you to see the show because it is available via other avenues on the mm -hmm. Internet. You can watch it through a subscription to Broadway HD. Right. And that is a streaming service, kind of like Netflix, but for theater. Mm -hmm. And you can subscribe directly to Broadway HD through their website. Or if you're an Amazon user, you can subscribe to the Broadway HD channel on Amazon Prime Video. Right. So you subscribe to it if, mm -hmm. and you, you get access to all that content that they offer. So those are a couple of different options. Right. And here are a couple of money saving tips that I just came across today. Mm. This is very exciting. So yeah. happy holidays. Yeah, exactly. If you subscribe to Broadway HD through Amazon Prime, you can take advantage of a seven day free trial. So that's a way to see the show if you're interested or any of the other shows they have. Mm -hmm. They have quite a, a nice little catalog from mm -hmm. Broadway HD. So seven day free trial. So you can check it out and see what you want to see. And then if you want to keep it, you keep it. If you don't, you don't. Mm -hmm. so that's one option. Or if you subscribe directly to Broadway HD, their website, Broadway HD, they are currently offering for the holiday season a 25% off for your subscription. So that's awesome. Yeah, you that's use cool. the code. There's a, a code that you use at checkout called Treat Yourself. Mm. Just type in Treat Yourself and get 25% off your subscription. And that's redeemable from November 23rd through December 15th, 2020. Very cool. And gift option, you can also gift a subscription to Broadway HD by using the code GIFT2020, so, which is also available November 23rd through December 15th, 2020. So that's a really cool idea for theater lovers in your life. If you want to give them a gift of a subscription to Broadway HD, that's awesome. That's excellent. That's excellent. And now saying all that, I also feel like I now need to say that this podcast is not in any way sponsored by Broadway yeah. HD. <laughs> we don't get a profit. We don't we don't get a cut. We just came across that information and wanted to share it with you because we know that it's always good to save a little money. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now back to From Here to Eternity, if, if you don't know the story, here's a little quick synopsis from the show creator Stuart Brayson's website. The musical is set in 1941 at the Showfield Barracks in Hawaii in the months leading up to the attack on Pearl Harbor. Story tells the tale of G Company, in particular First Sergeant Milt Warden, who begins an affair with his captain's wife, Karen. Insubordinate soldier and male hustler Maggio and Private Robert E. Lee Pruitt, an infantryman from Kentucky and self-described 30-year man, a career soldier, who falls in love with prostitute Lorene. 
Because he blinded a fellow soldier while boxing, the stubborn Pruitt refuses to box for his company's outfit, who is led by Captain Dana Dynamite Holmes, and then resists the treatment, a daily hazing ritual in which the non-commissioned officers of his company run him into the ground. So it's kind of a little bit of a background there of the show, if you're not familiar with the storyline. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of elements in that story, I guess. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have you have this kind of love story between first sergeant milt warden and and the captain's wife karen so that's mm-hmm. one thing that's going on and right. then you've got this character magio who is he's quite the character we'll talk about him more yeah. in a minute <laughs> <laughs> but he's got all kinds of activities going on and and things he's trying to hustle up and get involved in and then you've got robert e lee pruitt character who is the boxer mm-hmm even though that one character, Milt Warden, some people might consider him the lead, but mm-hmm. I actually think that Robert E. Lee Pruitt was probably the lead because he's the one, he's got multiple storylines. Yeah. He's got, he's trying to deal with his boxing past slash present. He's trying to deal with adapting to his new company. And he's got this romance with the prostitutes. Right. <laughs> so he's, he's got, got it all. Yeah. He's got so much going on. <laughs> <laughs> but we're we're gonna break all that down in a minute. Let me give you a little bit more background about the history of the actual show. So the musical from Here to Eternity is of course based on the nineteen fifty one novel by James Jones and right. it's a novel by the same name. Note that this is not based directly on the Academy Award winning nineteen fifty three film, which right. people are very familiar with, but rather the source material was the novel and That was for both the film and the stage show. Now, this I found interesting when doing this research. The original James Jones novel was actually censored when Mm -hmm. the book was published back in 1951. So he turned in his final manuscript and his editor censored it before publishing it. (laughs) So it did not include profanity or storylines featuring homosexual prostitution. Right, which is in the you know, which is in the musical, which which when I watched, it, I was like, oh my, where did this come from? Because again, yeah. you think about the movie, and right. which did not contain this material either. So yeah, right. And even if the 1951 novel had contained those elements, the movie might not have because right. they had all kinds of censorship and ratings and all that kind of stuff that they had to adhere to back in those days. Mm-hmm. But in 2011, the uncensored manuscript of the novel was released, and that's what the creators of the musical came across, and they acquired the rights and brought it to the stage. Yeah, which is always interesting to me because, you know, we, we see so many shows that we we grew up on that maybe were, like, say, maybe disney you know what I mean? And so mm-hmm. they've been sanitized. Like Mary Poppins, just for example, you know, <laughs> I, I didn't realize that all these dark elements were part of Mary Poppins because, of course, I grew up with a Disney version. And then right. when you see the musical, it has its actual content from the novel. So it's it's interesting mm-hmm. how that changes and we just don't even realize. We just take it for granted. Oh, this is how it is. Mm-hmm. Quite often things go through either censorship or or just modification because they think it'll be more palatable for the audience or what have you, or they want to appeal to a wider demographic whatever the reasoning might be. And that happens all the time. Yeah, yeah. So back to the musical, though. Stuart Brayson and Tim Rice, they wrote the music and lyrics, while the book of the musical is by Bill Oakes. And for those who aren't familiar with musical terminology, the book of musical refers to the script or the dialogue sections of a musical. Now, Tim Rice, he is probably the most well-known out of the writing team. And as a lyricist and book writer, Tim Rice is best known for his collaborations with Andrew Lloyd Webber, with whom he wrote, among other shows, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, Jesus Christ Superstar, and Evita. He also wrote Chess with the team from ABBA. And he wrote Disney's Aladdin, The Lion King, the stage adaptation of Beauty and the Beast, and the Broadway musical Aida. So lots of great stuff there. Yeah, let's face it. He's Broadway, West End, musical royalty. royalty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And he's also British, we should mention. So I'm sure many people are thinking, why on earth is this American story, American novel being done in the UK? Right. But 
the the writing team, all of, all of the people involved with creating it, they're British. Mm-hmm. So right. <laughs> it's the musical started its life in the UK and it made its West End and world premiere on October twenty third, two thousand thirteen, at the Shaftesbury Theatre in London. Mm. It ran for just over six months and it closed on March twenty ninth, twenty fourteen. Okay. That's a respectable run. I mean, it's, it's not years and years, but six right. months, that's not too too crazy. Mm-hmm. It didn't open and close on the same night. So no, thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, um, and there are some super fans of this show, I, I might add. There's some people who really, really love it. Mm-hmm. And they went several times. So I saw a few comments and message boards on, online in various places that I was researching this. Yeah, there's some people who were obsessed with the show. Well, I suppose there's some for everyone. You know, there's some shows for everyone that have that. (laughs) Now, it did have a U.S. debut in 2016 at the Finger Lakes Musical Festival in upstate New York. Hmm, Okay. Now, that's in a little bitty town called Penyan, New York, which is about 55 miles southeast of Rochester. But it never went to Broadway, the show. There you go. Never made it down to the city, so... Do you know where that is? I well, I do. I mean, I know where Rochester is. I used to work in Rochester, so but and I've heard of Penyon, but I don't know that I've ever actually, you know, been there. So yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, the Finger Lakes Musical Festival is fairly well established festival. Mm. I actually interviewed for a job there once. Oh wow. Well, it's a beautiful part of the country. I mean, Finger Lakes is just gorgeous, you know. You know, from like June to like August. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it's <laughs> I wouldn't want to be there in the dead I of winter. Know, otherwise it gets a little <laughs> chilly, all the lake effect and just a little bit of snow mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of the breakdown and background mm-hmm. and synopsis of the story. So what we think the show is. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was all geared up because I was really kind of looking forward to seeing kind of a big flashy musical, something I hadn't seen yet. And when I'm gearing up for a musical, of course, I'm looking for some really great show-stopping numbers, music that I'm going to walk away humming, or I'm going to want to look up the soundtrack because I want to listen to it again or what have you. And this one didn't have that for me. So mm. I kind of walked out thinking, oh, wow. All right. Well, I, I guess it kind of the music kind of furthered the story, <laughs> but but it didn't do anything for me to stand alone, you know, and that to me is right. a really good musical when you want to grab the soundtrack because it takes you back to watching it and it just kind of solidifies the story in your mind and you can kind of picture the story through the music and and this one just didn't do it, just didn't do it for me that way anyway. Now, I will say. I really liked some of the choreography that was happening, though, with the music, in particular with the soldiers, because that's also a challenge to, I mean, here we're we're talking about soldiers. So dancing soldiers, you know, that can sound kind of, you know what I mean? Just sounds like an oxymoron in a way, you know, but they had some really great movement pieces that they did that they looked like soldiers. You know, they were, they were moving like soldiers or they, or they were carousing like soldiers or or men, or they were mucking about in the barracks or what have you, you know? So, um, or they were kind of exercising that kind of that exercise calisthenic type of uh, look. So I was really kind of blown away by that and the precision. I thought that was really, really well done. I enjoyed a lot of the choreography that I saw. It seemed to fit. It worked. Mm -hmm. So those were a couple of my initial reactions when I was watching. What about you? Well, I think there were some really good elements to it. And it had all the makings of a total smash hit musical. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of expecting it to to be that. Mm -hmm. And I, too, felt a little let down at the end. And it's a little hard to put your finger on exactly what the issue is because, like I said, all the elements were there. Yeah. I thought the design was brilliant. I thought the set design, the lighting design, yeah. the video projections, yeah. the costumes, yep. every element from the design team was bang on perfect. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm with you on the choreography, too. I thought the choreography was impressive. The casting was perfection. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't imagine a better cast than that. The, the actors playing the roles, no complaints there at all. Yeah. The only little nitpicky thing that I would say about performance is, so they were all doing American accents, various American mm-hmm. accents, but 
I would place money on the fact that most of the cast members were British. They were probably all British. Which, you know, I didn't even take into consideration. I mean, I thought, mm. I mean, I didn't even think about this accent work. It seemed, it sounded so natural right. to me. Uh, I know, right. I know you noticed some inconsistencies, <laughs> I think, with the Southern accent. Just one character, mm -hmm. and it wasn't even noticeable all the time, but the one character, uh, Robert E. Lee Pruitt, who's frankly the main character. Yeah. He is meant to be from Kentucky. Right. And sometimes he sounded like he was from Brooklyn. Right, which still probably <laughs> was not his normal accent. You know what I mean? I mean right, exactly. <laughs> so. so my ears kind of went, mm, you know? Yeah. It's like, mm. yeah. But that was kind of my only, and it was the most nitpicky because it wasn't all the time. It was just on some words sometimes. So that is super, super nitpicky. Yeah. No, but yeah, I got you. But I, again, I, it, it didn't distract me at all. I thought right. they were pretty much spot on. So it, it didn't, certainly did not detract. Mm -hmm. I agree. So overall, and that is not a comment on his acting, like his acting choices. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the performances on everybody I thought were, were right yeah. on. Mm -hmm. So I'm yeah. trying to figure out what, what was it that didn't, didn't make it a home run for me? You know what I mean? It's. Yeah. I think the, oh, yeah, the I know. music was a bit, there were some, there were some moments, some songs, some uh, motifs that returned a few times that were really, really nice, but weren't necessarily things I'm walking away humming like you were talking about. No. no. There was no number, in individual number that would be a, a standalone hit that I no. could see people playing in their car and singing along with or Right. Like cabaret nights or karaoke nights or whatever you know i just there was nothing that really really truly stood out for me as far as the music it wasn't bad music by any stretch it just no. wasn't it just didn't land and stick yeah i mean you know music lands and sticks when like you say a, a piece out of a show stands alone like uh, and crosses over to a pop station right or, you yeah, know what i mean exactly. or an, another artist takes it on you know as a solo or what have you you a know single. that the music <laughs> yeah a single exactly that's, yeah. yeah there we go that's when you know it, it really works because it has this i mean some people hear music and don't even realize it's from a musical because right. they've never seen the musical but they love the song so you know it's a dynamite piece when that happens and it's successful on its own and i think some of this some of the success with a real slam dunk of a of a single song is when we go on an incredible journey with the character during the mm -hmm. course of the song right and i just didn't feel like there were any really strong moments like that and again i don't right. want to i, I don't want to suggest that the performers I think the performance did a great job. So that's why it's really hard to put your finger on yeah, it. Yeah, they can only do what they can work with what they have as far as you know, when it comes to lyrics and so on. They're not writing the stuff. They have to bring it to life. But right. again, it can only do so much with what you've what you've been given. We were talking about comparing this to other similar stories and one that we came up with was South Pacific, which of course is classic musical structure uh -huh. that's one where there of course are some more dramatic songs in south pacific but there's also some fun comedic songs mm -hmm. right as well I and mean, if you think about wash that man right out of my hair and you know right like those are catching the sailors you know doing yes. their, yeah doing their yes. thing yep. yeah and i think that that was definitely something missing here there wasn't enough of a variety and emotion to tell you the truth it was all kind of a downer in a way there was and i don't mind and i don't mind and you, you know do dramatic that. peace yeah you sure can Blame but, Miss Saigon. but even right Phantom. true you know but even <laughs> yeah. those but even those you know had some carousing fun numbers when you think of the Thenardiers and the master sure. of the house it's comical and fun and upbeat and you know that kind of thing from les mis but this i just it just didn't have enough of a of a variety in that way to kind of offset the down <laughs> you didn't feel it was balanced Right. There we go. Yeah. It, it needed to have some balance and those things help you cope better with the darkness. Mm. You have some balance of the light, you know, you just want to have that bit of um, balance, I guess is a perfect word to describe it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe so. I, I just, there's quite a few heavy musicals that I quite enjoy. <laughs> you're, you're right though. Even when you think of things like Les Mis, they do have these light moments, but mm -hmm. so 
Yeah, I don't know. But it's also the tunes themselves. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about these other shows, they get in your head. Right. You want to hear them again. And if you're a performer, you want to sing them because they're fun to sing. So Exactly. Yeah. And you can identify. and Yeah. It's just an alchemy that was kind of missing with that. It's not that the music was bad. The elements were all there, but something about the alchemy just didn't hit. Yeah. Well, and for me, I got to say, I didn't sympathize necessarily with any of mm-hmm. the characters to, to a point where I wanted them to succeed or, or fail or what have you. I was just like, huh. You know? And it wasn't exactly <laughs> it was just... a happy ending. No, gosh, no, you know. I mean, spoiler alert, Uh, Pearl Harbor. Right, 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 right. But but even individually. Yeah, I mean, we we likened this a little bit to South Pacific, I think only because, two, we we're talking about kind of the same time period Mm -hmm. and we're talking about the same kind of location, the setting, you know, that kind of thing. But that particular story had so many more elements to it and some wonderful music that really told the story about what was happening in that time period with regards to race and prejudice and and war mm. and a real variety of things happening where this one just didn't have that as well you know it just it didn't it didn't feel like it it really didn't feel like it i guess what it is is that the music did not it didn't seem to impact the character right in those solo moments those journey songs that's where we're supposed mm-hmm. to really get to know the character and fall in love with them Exactly. And really attach ourselves to them. That's right. Somehow that didn't happen. Yeah. Because I'm with you. The end was quite dramatic. Mm -hmm. Not just because of the Pearl Harbor attack, but it was dramatic for the individual storylines and how they ended. And yeah, it was really hard to, I wasn't very moved. And I should have been, I should have been crying at the end. (laughs) Yeah. No tears from me. No tears. (laughs) And I just was like, hmm. Uh So I, something was just kind of missing. And maybe it was character development a little too. Not just the music, but the character development. How they were written or something. And I, It has to be how they were written because, mm, I mean... Because I don't think it was the performances. No. I don't think it was the actors or the director. I don't, I don't think so. Mm-mm. I think it was the material. I'd be curious to read the novel mm-hmm. and see if... Is the source material... How does that compare? Maybe it's a little shallow on character development i have no idea Mm -hmm. could be um i haven't read it but that's a curious too if if maybe they were trying to echo the original flavor of the novel Mm -hmm. with what they put on stage so that's a question yeah i mean look i'm glad i saw it because i'm oh, yeah. really curious about it and like you said from a production standpoint it was really beautiful and i loved how it moved from scene to scene and the mix of projections was very natural mm-hmm. and really set the tone beautifully when they're setting the beach scenes and and also the overhead planes flying in and you know mm-hmm. all that kind of thing it was really 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 cool and and you know sometimes projections almost can take away i think because they are so modern but but these just seem to i don't know they just seem to blend and didn't feel it worked really well yeah they didn't feel out of place and they really just enhanced the whole show overall mm-hmm. it was a nice mix Yes, I, I thought the, the design was bang on. It mm-hmm. couldn't have been better. Yeah. So that was definitely a plus. There were so many things that were, were working really well. So It was a long one, though, too. It was long. Which kind of harkens back to the classic Broadway show, too, where a lot of them try to get you in and out in an hour 45 or under two hours type of thing with an intermission. Mm. This was like a 230, yeah. two hour 30 minute. Yeah, it was old school, run, old so. school in length as well. Uh-huh. You know? That's right. Yeah, that's right. I will have to say one of my favorite characters, though, and, and the, probably the one I actually did sympathize with the most was Maggio. Which he's kind of a secondary character, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, a supporting role, but he he was fun. Yeah, he was fun. I was disappointing when when he was incarcerated because I was like, oh, he's gone. We're not going to see him. I and mean, we do see him again, but but not as much. And because he did add a lot of flavor. Right. He was really likable because he was such a mm-hmm. scoundrel, but he he did it in such a charming way. Yeah. And then when he was incarcerated, it was devastating. Yeah. What happened to him? Yeah. So that one, I actually, I did get invested in that character. Yeah, yeah, I did too. The one I was probably had the least amount of investment in is the Sergeant Milt Warden character. 
and his lover, Karen, the spouse of, of mm-hmm. his superior, which if you're familiar with the movie, that's the scene on the beach. That's those two characters. Right. He seemed the most flat. He had the least amount of dimension. Exactly. We didn't get a lot of background from him. Mm-mm. We got a little bit more from her and the information trickled out here and there as to why she was the way she was. But him, you had nothing. It was kind of like he was just your tall, dark and handsome stranger. <laughs> you know that. Yeah, he's kind of gruff and he's, he's a bit of a stereotype, to be honest. Yeah. So I, I'm curious, Bruce, have you seen the film? I have not. Neither have I. I have not. It's one of those classics that you think, oh, it sounds good, but man, you know it's going to be long. It's going to be a bit of a slog. Commitment. (laughs) Yeah. And so you kind of think, do I really want to put myself through it? (laughs) But so no, I haven't. I I kind of want to now because I'd like to see the comparison and see if the character development was better in the movie and see if there was even more of a likability with the characters, because Mm. that certainly was lacking for me to be invested with these characters. Yeah. Well, the movie, of course, racked up tons of Academy Awards. Right. So so there's got to be something. It got a bunch of performance awards and directing award was best film that year, you you know, I got tons of stuff. So there must be something to it. We need to watch yeah. it. I think we need to watch yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> I wonder how do they develop the characters, the kind of flavor of the story? Mm-hmm. Did they do that based on the movie, based on the novel, or just their own spin on it? Yeah. I don't know. I don't either. So yeah. that I think we need to watch the movie to see if there's if we can see any parallels there. So we should watch it, Bruce. It is on Amazon Prime. You do have to rent it. It doesn't come right. with Amazon yeah. Prime, but, you know, it's cheap to rent. Yeah. <laughs> a few bucks. I think I will. <laughs> then we need to like come back and compare notes based on I think so too. what we've discovered from the film and how that relates to the musical. And, and if we really want to go nuts, we should read the novel. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> oof. <laughs> but I do think it's interesting that they were able to put some elements back into the stage version. Mm-hmm. Of course, the profanity. Right. Which, you know, I can see some people might get their feathers ruffled a bit about that, especially if they're familiar with the right. 1953 film. Right, exactly. They they go into it with a total different mindset. They're like, what the mm-hmm. heck? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it it seemed a little excessive. I gotta say. I mean, I, I, and I'm a, I guess I'm probably a little bit more sensitive to some people are, and I don't I typically mind a certain amount. I mean, but again, I, I look at the time period and I go, is this really how it was? Or you know, I don't know. I, I well, they were military, so I don't think you would have heard that kind of language necessarily in everyday life in a shopping center or a restaurant or mm-hmm. something like that or, or in a place of business that although maybe depending yeah but in the military i wouldn't be surprised to be honest yeah so yeah no i i, I thought that too i thought well you know could be could very well be but uh, mm. it's interesting yeah and then of course there's the storylines featuring homosexual prostitution mm-hmm. regardless of whether it's prostitution or or not prostitution, homosexuality was certainly underground in this time period. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. So it had to be because it was illegal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was kind of an interesting element. Yeah, it was, it was a surprise. That's another level of kudos to give to the performers because you saw quite a range of characters from more of the ensemble members. The leads, obviously, were were always the lead. But the actors who played ensemble members or kind of smaller parts, they ended up playing everything from gruff soldiers to drag queens. Mm -hmm. Right. (laughs) So it was quite the range for a lot of the performers, which is that. And that was impressive as well. Yeah. I think it's definitely has its place. I don't think it's going to be one of those ones that... One of those musicals that's going to be brought back too often, though, to tell you the truth. I don't think so either. I don't really think it's going to have much more of a life. Yeah. And I think it would be a really difficult one for community theaters or smaller regional theaters to do Mm -hmm. because it is a big show. It has a big cast and you need a lot of men for it. Right. So not, not impossible, but I just don't I just don't see it as being a popular choice. Right. Yeah. But we'll see. Who knows? Maybe somebody will remount it or maybe one day it will get to mm-hmm. Broadway. Maybe they'll 
maybe they'll work on some of those quirks and and find ways to to kind of fill in those gaps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that certainly has happened. And some people, some people loved it. So I'm, I'd be curious if any of our listeners have seen it or are able to see it after listening to this podcast. Let us know what you think. I, I'm really, yeah. really curious if if you enjoyed it, if you thought it was amazing, if you see some of the challenges that, that Bruce and I have noticed that kind of made it not rise to the top. I'd be really, really curious. So let us know. Hit us up on social media and yeah. let us know your thoughts on the show. Check it out through Amazon Prime or directly from Broadway HD, either one, and let us know. Yeah, let us know. Well, Bruce, we will have to see what else comes along on the internet and keep watching stuff. I, I quite enjoy these kind of breakdowns of what we're watching. and I do too. I mean, it definitely gives me a, a push to to, to want to see more. Mm-hmm. I mean, I do, I do love the theater anyway, but it's not the same as going to see a live production. But right. it is when it it's a, a big production like this or something unfamiliar. Uh, it, it's a great opportunity to see some of these pieces and and still view art and, and recall how wonderful it is, you know, um, even if it's not the perfect production, right. you know. And if it is yeah. something new and unpredictable and you're unsure about, this is a great way because it's a lot less of an investment. Yeah, You're true, not paying true. a lot of money for tickets and you're not getting all gussied up and going to the theater and, you know, you can watch it for free or for a low cost in the comfort of your own home. <laughs> At your, at yeah. your leisure. That's right. Absolutely. It's really, it's kind of the silver lining of this whole thing. So. Yeah, it is. Yeah. If you got to find one, that's it. <laughs> Absolutely. So there's, there's tons of stuff happening online. So we'll keep watching. There's a, and there's a variety mm-hmm. of these, of course, these last couple of things we've been talking about have been top level, top tier productions, Broadway and West End. Right. But there are. Our local theaters are continuing to produce content online, so we will keep checking in with that. And um, and some are even doing some actual live shows. That's right. That's right. PBS, of course, is great for mm. offering theatrical content quite often. Uh, you know, every now and again, they used to release a production. Great performances. That's the, the series. Right. Great performances. And yeah, which and so but they're going to have a release of a variety of productions coming up as well. Cool things to check out. So worth tuning in mm-hmm. to PBS. Yeah, absolutely. Another a way to see some theater that is free. Good stuff. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Theater via the internet. <laughs> got to do what you got to do. <laughs> That's right. Until we can do something different. <laughs> well, all right, oh, Bruce. Well. This was great to check in and chat about this, yeah. this piece we both saw. So, yeah, I look forward to the next one. Yeah, absolutely. Me too. Well, Melanie, you have a good rest of your evening. All right. Continue too. to stay well until we get to see each other face to face. One day. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a song in there somewhere, right? Probably. Probably. But I don't think it was in From Here to Eternity because I don't remember it. No, <laughs> it definitely wasn't. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, Bruce. We'll All talk right. to you later. Have a good okay. night. We'll see right. you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thespis in the Green Room is a Courageous Crossings production. Music used in this podcast is licensed by ASCAP and BMI. Fighting the fire. Till he dies.